All right, guys, taking a break from the monitor work to try and repair a Mortal Kombat 2 PCB. Uh, this one's actually working. Uh, it resets occasionally. Uh, that's why I use it for testing. This is just a test PCB I use to test ROMs and other things and do some poking around for as a test bench or test pad for testing other boards because of the reset problem. And I haven't really gone through and done any troubleshooting to fix the reset issue because I need a board that I use for testing. So that's basically what this is. So. I'm sure at some point I may try and fix or figure out why it's resetting, but for now I don't really worry about it because I just use this for testing. So the main part or main portion of this video is going to entail the repair for this board. So as you can see, it's got some severe graphics corruption. And it's not any of the RAM chips because the RAM chips actually check good. If I do a reset on the board here, hit the reset button, you see it looks normal when you boot it, but then when it gets to the actual boot screen, uh, it's not so normal, and um, I've already figured out what the problem is, but I wanted to show the before so you can see what's happening. Uh, it's got a bad U13 on the expansion board, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. So obviously, yeah, that's not correct. Um, but basically, there are eight chips that are involved with the color palettes and the graphics uh, information in between the RAMs. There, these are the eight RAM chips. And then you have UC8, UA8. UC9, UB9, UA9, UC10, UB10, UA10. These eight chips interface the uh, JAMA edge all through and into the RAMs. So knowing that, I had a similar problem uh, way back a couple years ago, I think two or three years ago, with a very similar issue. It turned out UB9 was actually faulty. And I found that out very easily using the logic probe here. So I got the logic probe back out when checking. It turns out that UB9 was actually fine. But this problem could be caused by any of these chips. But these two chips were, co were coming up as, as good on the ROM check, or the boot screen, as well as all the eight RAM chips. Those were all coming up okay. And none of these are checked on the boot screen, or the, the ROM check. So I went ahead and did some reflow on everything. That didn't fix it. I haven't gone through and cleaned up the reflow. It's actually, well, you'll see it when I get to this part. Um, but I went through with the logic probe and tested every pin for highs and lows in activity and compared it to this board and I found the problem. On this board, well let me go back I should say, um, there's an open trace. If you go to UB10 and you count 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth pin over from bottom left should ring to the fourth pin over on the bottom right of these RAM chips. It did not. So when you go to pin 4 of UB11, it rings to pin 4 of UB12, rings to pin 4 of UB13, rings to pin 4 of UB14. That's all good. And uh, when you go to pin 4 of UA10, it rings to uh, the bottom left. From the bottom right, pin 4, pin 4 rings to pin 4, 4, 4, 4. That's correct. But pin 4 of UB10 did not ring to 4, 4, 4, 4. So there's an open trace or open circuit between pin 4 of, or I say, I can say pin 4, but the fourth pin over from the bottom left. I don't know which pin it is, obviously. I haven't looked it up. I'm too lazy. But this fourth pin from the bottom left should ring to the pin 4 from the bottom right on these RAM chips. It does over here. It does not over here. And how I found that was with the logic probe going through and testing all the pins, the fourth pin from the bottom left on UB10 had no activity. It had no high, no low. It was completely, totally dead. And it should not be because on this board it had activity. So when I tested this board to see what continuity I had to where it's supposed to go, lo and behold, there was no continuity. So... I added a jumper from the fourth pin over from bottom left on UB10 to pin 4 on the bottom right over from the bottom right on the uh, UB11 here. That's what I have going on right here. It's obviously very, very temporary. And you can see that it's currently cut. It's not attached because I want to show the solution here. So you can see how corrupt that is. If I just take my fingers and touch these two leads together, watch what happens fixed. Disconnected, connected. Yep. So somehow, some way between UB10, you can see fourth pin from bottom left to fourth pin, bottom right over. Um, somehow, some way between that connection there, it is open. I don't see anything visually cut or broken or corroded. It may be underneath the RAM chip could be bad, or it could be bad underneath UB10, I don't know. I'll have to do a more proper repair, uh, which I'll do and then show off here. I'll do a, you know, a jump cut to the proper repair. 
But all, but pin four to pin four to pin four to pin four, all of that rings correct. All of that rings good. That's why these weren't coming up bad in the RAM or the boot check. Um, but of course, these six chips here aren't tested in the boot check, so it's hard to know. You would, this one obviously would have registered as failed. Uh, but that was the problem, and obviously the solution is to fix the jumper and uh, repair the trace or repair the connection, and that's it. So we'll test this one more time. This is still obviously a broken screen. Fixed. Not fixed. So, yep. That's it. Just wanted to share a um, little quick troubleshooting. I mean, I figured this out fairly quickly. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Knowing, because the the owner's manual for MK2 actually has all of the, uh, the schematics in there. And you can look at the schematics and see all these chips are part of the color palette and graphics processing section of the board. So knowing that, you can go right to it. And like I say, the last time I had a problem that looked almost just like this identical was uh, UB9 was bad. So I replaced it and fixed the problem. But in this case, it was an open trace. So you never really know what you're going to run into. Uh, but yeah, the Logic Probe can be your friend. Get yourself one of these. They're like nine bucks. And you'll, you'll never, it'll be a great investment for you. You'll never <laughs> have to uh, scratch your head with stuff like this if you get one of them. It, uh, obviously, you'd want to have an oscilloscope. It'd probably be a better idea or a better investment than this. But this still does what it needs to. It allowed me to find this problem. I'm sure even if I didn't have this, I could, I could have gone through and checked for continuity everywhere, which is how I found this in the first place. Um, well, I found it in the first place because of the logic probe. I had no actual logic on that pin, but using the multimeter and testing for continuity, that's how I found the open trace. So it's a combination of troubleshooting, but it's not too difficult to do this, guys. If you ever have a board problem, get yourself a logic probe and uh, go through and see if you have any dead pins on the pins that correspond to your the section that you're having issues with, according to the manual. So... Uh, yeah, that's it. Wanted to share. I'll get this pro professionally or properly repaired and do a jump cut here and we'll see how it turned out. So one moment. All right, so repair complete. I got a little bodge wire here going from the correct pin to the correct pin. Nothing's touching. Everything checks good for a ring out. And it's just a nice little neat quick uh, bodge wire. There's nothing on the on the solder side of the board. There's no traces. That pin actually goes to. Let's see if I can show it here. That pin goes. Where are we at here? All right. So it's one, two, three, four. Goes up and over to right here, right there. Now that in turn goes back to this side. So there's nothing on the other side of the board that I can use to run that trace for. So I have to put this little bodge wire, but it works just fine. It may not be pretty, uh, but it is good and it works for what it needs to. So let's fire this up and check it out. All right. Here we go. There you go. I also replaced U13 from uh, the expansion board on the other test board that I had earlier in the video. I just stuck, robbed U U13 off of there and put it on here, so it should check good. There you go. And yeah, um, everything else was good. And there you have it. Quick and easy repair. Bada bang. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more content when I can get it up. I apologize, I don't do I, other, you know, YouTube guys do daily videos and, no, oh, pardon me, uh, things like that. But with my job and the COVID thing going on and, um, you know, not having access to all the machines, being up at the business and trying to take care of a hundred other games, it's just not feasible for me to do videos every day. But uh, I'll try and get as many as I can done. You know, I got more monitors coming in and other stuff to repair so stay tuned for more content we'll see what i can come up with and i appreciate everybody following along and we'll see you on the next video